morning, Rabotai. We are continuing on Shukhar, Rukhorachayim, Siman, Samechei, Sif Gimel. Maran writes, Karakriya, Shema, when Ichnas, the Bittakneset. If you already read, we, we're just going over this quickly. If you read already Kriya Shema, and you enter Bittakneset, and you find the Tzibur that's saying Shema again, you read it with them. Tov sheyikrai mahem. It's, it's good to read it with them. And even though that you've done or you've fulfilled your obligation of saying Shema, you will still get schar like a person that's reading the Torah. That's the minimum. And at the same time, you show to yourself that you're accepting the yoke of HaKadosh Baruch Hu with the Tzibur. Together, you're, just, you're not sticking out. You're not standing out. You're not separating yourself from the Tzibur. And the Ramah adds, You're only obligated to say the first Pasuk. That you should do definitely. The rest of it is good to do, but you're not obligated, says the Ramah, Kemoshen Itba'er, as we have discussed already in the previous if that we did. Says, Maran Again, this is something important to keep in mind that when, when a person goes with the Tzibur and they are all doing something, Rambam says that a person that's poresh midarkea tzibur, that you separate yourself from the tzibur, that's a very negative thing. Especially when they're, they all show that to themselves that they are accepting the yoke of Hashem, whether not, not being by saying Shema or saying Modim. For instance, you come, you pass it through a shul and they're by Modim. And everyone is bowing, so you say Modim, you, you bow as well, because even though that you already finished your minyan, you've said Modim the Rabbanan, you've said the, the Chazarat Hashas, you listen to and all of that, you still do it because you want to be a part of the tzibur. You don't want to be poresh midarke ha tzibur. Says Maran, starting Siman Samichvav, be'eze makom yachol lafsik, be'eze makom lo yafsik. What places can you pause and interrupt your, your Kriyat Shema and what places you cannot do? Says the Shukharuch Sif Alif, and this is again from a straight out Gemara of Yud Gimel of Masechet Barachot, if you are in between the prakim, that means in between the brachot, or you said, let's say, the first parasha, and you're right before the hayayim shamoa, you finished the hayayim shamoa, you're right before the yomer, that's in between the parashiot, then you could actually initiate saying hi, saying shalom to somebody that you are, um, supposed to say shalom to someone that's very respectful, halachically speaking. You, you know, your father or your rebbe comes, so on and so forth. We'll see that that to be taken with a grain of salt just in a moment. But this is what the Shkaruch writes straight out of the Gemara. And you are meshiv shalom lechol adam. You could answer shalom to whoever said shalom to you. In other words, when a person says shalom to you, not to answer shalom, it's like stealing a shalom from a person. If someone says hi to you, you have to, it's a basic, sometimes you go and you say hi to people, it's such a disrespect. They, they, they don't even bother looking at you and answering a good morning. It's, it's a very, it's, you know, aside from the part of Chilul Hashem that there is, if, a, if it's a person, it's a yeshiva person, a chrom person, but it's just simply, Hazal called it a gozer shalom, a stealing a basic shalom from somebody. So, of course, if it's asur for you to answer, then you can't answer, you can't answer, right? And, and when it's in respect of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of course, but when it's mutar, then you want to answer. And here, when somebody says shalom to you, and you're in between the prakim, regardless of who the person is, even if he's not a very respectable person, he's still meshiv shalom lechol adam. You answer shalom to everyone. In the middle of Perek, if you're not by the end and the beginning of a Perek, you're smack in the middle of one of the Prakim, you can't say Shalom to someone respectable. You only could say Shalom to someone that you're afraid of, that they're going to harm you. Kegon, or somebody that, that, that you're hayav to fear them halachically. For instance, the Pasuk says, Ish imo aviv tirau. You have to have reverence from your mo mother and father. So, or 
right? But Aviv or Rabo, so if your father, your mother, your Rebbe, or someone that is bigger than you, that's bigger than you, walks in and says, you know, and, and you want to initiate Shalom. Or certainly he goes without saying if a king comes in or a bully, a person that you know, could actually hurt you and he will be offended if you don't recognize his presence being the, the God's gift to humanity, that now he's, he's, you're in his presence and you have to acknowledge that by saying hi. So if you don't do that, that will be hurtful for you. You could initiate saying shalom to all of those. So somebody that you're halachically supposed to be afraid of, not afraid, but in reverence of, or someone that physically you're afraid of because they could hurt you, like a king or an anas. And just like this one is a notch up, answering shalom also is a notch up. So therefore you can't just answer to anyone, but you could answer to Adam Nikbat, to someone respectable, you could answer shalom to them. Not only if you are in the middle of a parak, you would have thought maybe you're in the middle of a parak, but at least you're at the end of a pasuk. So no, even if you're in the middle of a pasuk, you haven't finished the pasuk yet, you could still initiate or answer to, the, to these individuals that we mentioned. pasuk shema. Of course, aside from the actual pasuk of shema, that is more chamur, you would have to finish the passage first and Baruch Shem as well. You can't at all pause those psukim unless it is somebody that it's a karan you're afraid um, that, that this person is going to maybe kill you. So that's safek nefashot, even a safek speka, you could be making. So says the shukharu. This is only when you bump into each other or the guy enters and comes in. But if you're going towards him to meet him, that's Asur. If you're in your place and, and you get up to go to his place to, to meet with him, and you say, well, he is a respectable person. And it's mutar, it says in Shukharuf to say hi. No, that would not be mutar if you're initiating it. This is if you bump into each other and he's, you know, now the scenario has been presented to you. So then in that case, you you will say, you will say hi, but not that you should initiate and create a situation in which you would have to, um, you, you would have to acknowledge his presence. That would, of course, not be the proper conduct. And not only this is Asur in Bikal Shema, this is Asur even before you start your Tfila, because there is an Isur of Oti Shlachta Achare Kavecha, the Pasuk, the Gemara Darshins, that you're not supposed to respect somebody else before you respect Hashem. That includes yourself, so therefore we don't eat before Suda, before Tfila rather, right? Because you're respecting your kuf before you respect Hashem. You could have basic things to wake you up, like a hot water, tea, a coffee, the whole machloket uh, in early ages, if you could have a, a coffee that, that has been uh, mixed with, with creamer, with milk, or maybe you have to have black coffee. Sugar was a big machloket, because sugar used to be considered a, a very big delicacy. Well, 200 years ago, 250 years ago, not everyone used sugar. Sugar was considered a very expensive delicacy. So Maran Chida, for instance, writes that sugar you cannot do. Sugar already is a fancy thing. You're you're indulging yourself. You're not supposed to indulge yourself before soon. But nowadays, people it's considered like a regular thing to have sugar. Of course, it's not a healthy thing to have sugar, but uh, that's a separate issue. But if you regularly have sugar, uh, you can have a regular coffee before before shaharit. That's not considered that you're indulging yourself. That's considered you're waking yourself up to to be able to daven. But eating a suda before tefillah is is not mutar because of the same thing. And also greeting someone is not mutar if you're initiating it. Now, if you bump into each other, you say, hi, it's fine, no, no problem. That's the basic derech eretz. 
But if you go out of your way to go to his house and knock on his door, so I was passing by here, I figured I'm going to come give you a hug and, and see, see about your whereabouts and see how you're doing. That's already not mutar before Fidav and Fidav Shacharit because of this pasuk of the Gemara Darshins in, um, in the Fudalit in Masechet Brachot, Abud Aleph, that says, Bama Nechshav, you, you, you consider that you're doing something something negative. Says the Gemara, says the Mishnah rather, the Bama Nechshav to la zeh ve'ulev, ayin sha'am be'perush rashiv, ayin be'kidushin, davlam et gimel, she'lo yehe kevodo chamur mikevod shamayim. That you don't want the kavod of somebody else to proceed and be more um, focused on then Kavod Shamayim, then Kavod of Akadosh Baruch Hu. Shoel Bishlom, Afilu Belashon Laz. This is not just um, asking in Lashon Hakodesh and using the name of Shalom, which is the name of Akadosh Baruch Hu, but even if you're saying it in a, another language, Vedavka Bepanim Hadashos Shoelu Meshi, Sheim Lo Ishal Yavoli De Sinah. This is only by somebody that if you don't initiate to ask how they're doing, and say good morning to them, they'll maybe come to misunderstand it and, and hold the garage or the hurt. And in Sefer Chinuch, we learn that mm-hmm. so if you know somebody understands the halakha, he knows that you're in the middle of Shema, of the Shema, he doesn't expect you to, to say Shalom. His understanding is, is easygoing. Then says do not pause. Even if you are in the middle of in, in between the prakim, still don't pause. You're, you're in the middle of Tfila, and that's fine. Therefore, says the Mishnah Berura, based on our minhag nowadays, that we don't do this in Bet Knesset anyways. People don't go greet each other in the Bet Knesset. In, in, in based on Armin Haxes, the Chafetz Chaim. Chalila Lishol Ola Ashiv says, Chasu Shalom, you should not initiate or answer, even Divre Torah. Even Divre Torah. So, therefore, Lo Ben Aprakim, Velo Ben Pesuket Zimra, not between the Prakim, not in Pesuket Zimra, and of course goes without saying, in Birkot Kriyat Shema. Now, the Chafetz Chaim adds to this that. This is not just by a respectable person, but even to somebody that normally speaking you would be afraid of, like your father, your rabbi, people who you're chayav, to revere them and and, uh, have a positive fear towards them, still, this would be the same thing. Your rabbi passes you by, no words. Because he understands it's the minhag, we don't do it, so therefore you don't need to to follow the the, uh, letter of the law, so to speak, because it has been established that we don't need to do this because we're busy with the tefillah. And Chacham ben Tzior Abba Shaul, Arav Shalom, he, his Talmidim, write that even though that nowadays we don't ask in the Bet Knesset, we don't uh, schmooze and, and uh, exchange hi, how are yous? In Mikol Makom, he says, if you are in a place, if you find yourself in a place in tefillah, that's mutar for you technically to, to stop and to, to ask or answer. Even if you're in the middle of a pasuk and somebody comes to you, right? And says, Shalom, you have to answer. It says, even though that you won't initiate because of this minhag, but if somebody came to you and said, Shalom, because he didn't know the halakha or because he messed up, whatever it is, and he said, Shalom, you have to answer if you could, halakhically speaking. So therefore, it's important to know the details of this sugya because what if somebody comes and doesn't know you're in the middle of Tila or doesn't know the halakha? Many people don't know necessarily the details of this halakha. Therefore, if he comes to you, even if you're in the middle of a pasuk, you stop and the answer says, Chacham and Sion. And again, he, he brings this, this thing that if you don't answer, you call the gazlan, you call a, a, as if you're stealing something from a person. You're stealing the shalom that you should be answering, and you're not. That is considered a negative thing. So says Ahamnesion, you would have to be uh, mindful of this as you go about your life. So it says, yes, correct, of course. 
the point. If you pause the, the pasuk, you don't continue from where you paused. You go back to the beginning of that pasuk. Correct. Now, Kafachayim also writes that um, someone that is in Bet Knesset and he's not davening, he's just he's after davening, he's before davening. It hasn't well. It's called after davening. He's not busy with tefillah. He is allowed to ask shalom of anyone, anyone that comes and he, he greet them. But he says that because of the Kedushat Bet Knesset, if you could be Mahmir, not to speak about mundane things, even though that Shailat Shalom is usually a positive thing, even that is not the Varim Shabit Kedusha, and you should be careful in the Bet Knesset. I once heard from Rabbi Sion Nitzafi, his um, encounter, his experience with Rabbi Meir Abu Hasara, Rabbi Shalom, the, the son of Baba Salu. Um, apparently, he was very close with him. And uh, Rabbi Meir Abu Hasara, um, he actually passed away before his father, didn't live a very long life. He was a tremendous personality of Torah. And he was a massive Tamil Chacham. So Rabbi Sion Nitzafi said he, for a moment he would not stop from learning, for a moment. The entire time he was learning Torah, he was in Mamash and Bakti in all the Ishroni, Makronim, not just themes of Kabbalah. He was a massive Tamil Chacham. So was with Baba Sali. You know, this whole thing of, of, of Babot or Mekibalim, that uh, they know nothing, of, not nothing, but they're not necessarily Tamil Chachamim, just Babot or, or Mekibalim. That's not in the Surah of Am Yisrael. It's unfortunately a new thing that has, has been created, that you have uh, young people who don't necessarily know anything. That uh, they, they become uh, with a following, and again, hopefully, hopefully everything is, you know, meant for good and so on. But but Baba Sali himself, at the age nineteen almost, when uh, his father uh, passed away, his brother was killed, uh, Masud, and uh, he took basically over the entire yeshiva. It was a, a, a yeshiva, and the whole yeshiva that he ran. He gave the shiur klali. He was his bakhtin shas at age nineteen. And not just the Mikubal, it was a tremendous person. And Rabbi Sion Musafi, I, I myself did not know this, but he said that Rabbi Meir Abu Khasira was a massive Tamil Chakam. And uh, he never stopped learning. So I was once walking with him, and the entire way we were learning, we were talking and learning, like you know, high level learning. So I was in Yeshiva, and the Bahuri Yeshiva, he must have been. And then, uh, so we were learning and talking, learning, and said, as soon as we got to the to the Bet Knesset, he motioned to me that he's not going to speak, even though that we were speaking and learning. And so he bowed completely towards the Echal, and he said the Pesukim, having his hand in the Mezuzah, and so on and so forth. And so he took me to the side room, outside the actual area of the Bet Knesset, and we continued to finish up the, the talk that we had in the Torah. So people, tradition, our, our tradition has been uh, as far as him especially, to be extremely careful about, about the kavod of the Bet Knesset, not to, um, not to say even things that are regular divrechol, even though that they're not varim betedim. Uh, it's brought that Aliyah Kadosh would not even give a musar shmuz in the Bet Knesset because he was afraid, he was concerned that maybe one thing leads to another and then you're going to come to speak divrechol or divarim betedim. So he was extremely careful in the kusha of the Bet Knesset, the bell, I think it was the Belzer Rebbe, one of the main Rebbe, I believe it was the Belzer Rebbe, he, he said, you know why the Holocaust did not affect the Sephardic countries, even though that they entered some of the Sephardic countries, they went to Canadia, for instance, the Nazis, but they did not kill anyone, they, they did not harm um, anything, nothing, nothing um, um, important anyway. And he said it's because the Sfaradim have tremendous kavod for Batek Knesset. They don't talk to the whole, they respect the way they built the Bet Knesset, the way they conduct themselves with the Bet Knesset, and that's the school that they have. Somebody, actually, I said this story to someone, and he mentioned to me that in the, uh, in the crystal map, when they went and destroyed them and, and, and vandalized and dismantled the shuls and set them on fire, there was one Bet Knesset, a beautiful Bet Knesset, that was not affected. Not one single glass of it was broken. No harm, no theft, nothing. Only Bet Knesset. It was in the middle of, you know, right near the other ones. Everyone knew about it, but no one touched it. So what's the story of the Bet Knesset? This was a breakaway minyan for people who were disturbed by others speaking in the shul. And they said, you know, we're going to establish a new minyan that nobody speaks. 
Zero tolerance for speaking even. Only Divre Torah and only Tefillah and nothing else. And that was that shul. That shul was, was not affected by, by crystal enough. Again, this is a different topic and an important one for a different time. But nevertheless, says the Kafakhaim, even though that would be mutar for this person to, to say shalom to people, but better, not to ask, not to engage in conversations, mundane conversations, because of the kusha of bitfulness. It so says, the Mishnah Bura, what is considered Adam Nikhbat? When you say a respectable person, what is considered a respectable person? Like an elderly individual or a Hakam or a Hakam, and also if a person is wealthy, that the person is, is fit to respect him because of his status in the community. Now, this is a very sensitive topic. The Gemara tells us that, that many of the Tanaim, uh, they respected Ashirim because they felt that Rosh Baruch Hu wants them to have a certain status in the, in the community, and therefore uh, they, they complied with that. Not, you know, again, again, this is, I call it a sensitive topic because um, not to be mistaken with somebody doing Chanufa, flattering for somebody just because they, they are expecting benefit from them, that would be perhaps Asur. Um, flattery is never a good, good thing unless it's, it's meant for learning more Torah and so on. There are exceptions to, to the rule of Chalupa, but th this is just because HaKadosh Baruch Hu has, has given them a certain status and you want to comply with HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Ratzon. So therefore, says the Mishnah Bura, someone that is an Ashir, also Rabim Shoharim Pene Ashir, it's, it's a Kavot that you give him. Now, Chacham Obadiah writes, in the name, they write in the name of Chacham Obadiah that because of the kavod of, a, of, of a, an important person, um, this is only an ashir that is proved. A ashir that's a, a, a rich person that keeps the Torah, that has the, the initial respect, uh, just a person that doesn't keep any of the Torah because of his status financially, that would not be mutar at all to stop and to, to, to be sure. The shlomo, that's not considered a... Um, a, a proper pause in the middle of the Tefillah. It says, oh now, how about getting up for a Zaken? Now, we know that Zaken, someone that's of age, 70 and up, according to Ariya Kadosh, 60 and up, right? That already is considered a Zaken. You have to respect them. Right? So how about standing up when a zaken is passing you by and you're in the middle of Shema. So Maran Chida writes in Birkei Yosef, in Sefer and Shukha Aruch, that you have to get up. Even though that you're in the middle of Shema, you still have to respect the elder and get up. Even though that um, we usually say, en, en kavod talmid barav, right? And you're respecting Hashem, so to speak, and this is respecting another person aside from Hashem. When you're supposed to be respecting Hashem by saying Shema, still, this is Kavod of Hakadosh Baruch Hu to listen to the Torah and to respect the elder. And therefore, says the the Bikri Yosef, you get up and you stand up. Same is with the Ben Shkak Avadia. Everyone agrees that if a, an elderly individual passes you by, you stand up to respect them, even if you are in the middle of. Shema. Says the Mishnah Burah, Lechol Adam, that you can answer Shalom to anyone. That means anyone that already said Shalom to you. Now, it, it, it sounds from the, the Shuvot of uh, Rashba, the Kiddushe Rashba, the Mutar Lachat Kila Lishol Vishonom HaKore, Afal Pishi Yodia Shis Tarek Lashiva. The obvious question that we didn't discuss is, so everyone is listening to this year over here in, in the in the Bukhness of the Bukh Midrash. Now you'll have a question, Rabbi, can I initiate, say shalom to someone that I know probably is saying Shema? Or should I keep quiet? Now, of course, based on the Minahag that the Chafetz Chaim brought already, so of course, if the Minahag is nobody does it, so don't do it. 
But halachically speaking, right? Let's let's imagine we want to keep to the shukharu. So I know that this person is in middle of Shema. I'm passing by him. Should I just keep quiet and not say shalom? Or can I say shalom knowing that with my shalom, he will have to answer and pause his Shema? It will be mutar for him, but I could prevent it by not just saying shalom to him. Should I do that? So say, it seems from Hidusha Rashba, one of the greatest names in the Rishonim, that you don't have to be concerned about that. You could actually initiate saying uh, saying shalom, even though that you know that that would cause him to now having to um, to answer me. Even though that you know he will now have to ask me a question, even though that you even though that you know he will now have to answer you, you could still do it and initiate saying shalom. Now, the Kafachayim says not to do that. Even though that from the Rashba seems to, to be like this, he says, if, if you know the Allah, and he knows the Allah, everyone is on the same page, don't, don't initiate. Let him say the thing with the Kavana. Don't disturb his Kavana. Let him, let him do his thing. Now, the second part of the Sa'if we learned about uh, respect for for the, the, the father or the Rebbe, that you are not just uh, obligated to respect them, but to revere them, certain, <clears throat> certain elements of the Yir'ah is there. This is not any rabbi. This is rabo muvat. What is the difference between rabo and rabo muvat? Rav muvat is either of two scenarios. Either somebody that is your primary source of Torah, that you lamad that you learn most of your Torah from it, or somebody that is considered like a nasi, that is the top leading figure in Amisra, that even if you didn't learn your Rokh from, but you're still uh, obligated to respect him like your Rabu Mufat, like your main Rabu. So that is Rabu. Sheikar Torah Tohemen, the main chunk of your Torah is from him. Even though that now you are more uh, sophisticated than your rabbi, you could have such a case. It will be a, a, it will be the dream of every rabbi that their students should, you know, hopefully it should be a dream of every rabbi that their students should surpass them and become bigger leaders and bigger bigger figures in, in Torah. One of the areas that you don't have ayin hara is is ch- children and students. No father has Ayn Hara, is jealous of their kid. No real Rebbe, no real teacher should be jealous of their students as well, because it's your success when they are, they're, 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 they surpass you in Chokmah. Again, we had this, of course, by Shlomo Melech and Shmi Megara and so on, but you have this, so therefore, even though that he is now bigger than his rabbi, but he's still considered his rabbi mubahak because he learned rov kochmato mimenu, v'shayach v'hu mora. And therefore, he have not to just respect them, but to review them as well. Ishimov ha'aviv tirahu. Utnan, and we learn, mora rabach ke mora shamayim. The reverence of your rabbi in your eyes should be like reverence to the Yafam HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that's why... It is important, Gadol Mimenu, and it says not only that, any person that's Gadol Mimenu, that is bigger than you in Chokmah, Eno Mafsik Klal Afilu Shabim, if you are equals, he's not greater than you, you're equals, peers. That's Kavod, but not Yura. <clears throat> if you are bigger, you're reading Shema, and you're bigger than this other fellow, then you don't have to stop at all. Even if he's a tamachacham, but you're a bigger tamachacham, then you don't have to stop for him at all. And this time we say gadol bechokma that he's bigger than you bechokma in 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 wisdom. Harim pasku da afilu ihu gadol mimenu have rak mi penei akavod. That even if he is bigger than you in chokma, that's not yira, that's only kavod. So therefore, you can initiate, you can answer. Meaning, in, if if you're in the middle of the parak, you're not ben aprakim. Im lo shehu tamin chacham mutlag bedoro as a mechlal moran. So unless he is considered on a world stage tamin chacham, 
not just bigger than you, but he's way bigger than you in a way that even though that he's not your rabbi, he's not your Rof Kokmato Mimenu, but he is a world stage rabbi. He's the Nasi, he's Kahal Badia, he's the Shon Lezion, he's the Rav Arashi. He is someone that the world has to, uh, to consider as, as a leading figure. In that case, says the, the Mishnah Bura, that's considered Gadol Mimenu. And of course, when, when you have somebody that um, as an anas is going to harm you or go tell on you and inform on you and so on and so forth, that is considered also a danger. Therefore, you have to be careful. Mezrat Hashem will continue these in the days to come.